Uh, we'll stand for an invocation followed by the pledge by Councilman Tonsmeyer. And uh, I've asked to do the invocation tonight. Uh, simply put, I'd just like to have a moment of silence uh, for any prayer that you have in your heart. And if you would, please keep the family of Michael Dean uh, in your thoughts as uh, he's a community leader, did a lot of good in a lot of places, including the Cartersville School Board. He, uh, he lost his battle with cancer earlier today. If you'll please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Join me in the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Keelan, the roll, please. Carrie Hodge, Ward 1. Here. Jay Stepp, Ward 2. Here. Lewis Tomsmeyer, Ward 3. Here. Lindsey McDaniel, Ward 4. Here. Diane Tate, Ward 5. Here. Lori Pruitt, Ward 6. Here. First item on the agenda is the approval of the council meeting minutes from our October 20 meeting. Council, you got these on Tuesday or so, so you've had a chance to look at them. Chair will entertain any additions, corrections, or motions. Mayor didn't see any additions, corrections. Make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Minutes are approved. We've got a set of public hearings and uh, votes tonight uh, in regards to planning and development. Uh, the first item is T11-02. Mr. Menino. Uh, thank you, Mayor. As you noted, this is a proposed text amendment um, to alter the standards, special use requirements for doing residential mixed use with commercial. Um, Planning Commission did recommend approval of this application, and there have been no additions or changes since our first reading. Okay. Any questions for Randy at this point on this text amendment portion? Uh, seeing none, I'll open up a public hearing for the text amendment T11-02. Anybody wishing to step forward, speak for or against may do so at this time. And seeing none, I'll close the public hearing in relation to T11-02 text amendment and uh, ask the council if there's any discussion, and if not, uh, the chair will entertain any motions. Make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. And the motion is passed unanimously. Our next item is SU 11-04. Uh, yes. Thank you again, Mayor and Council. This is directly related to the previous text amendment request. This is a special use for Mr. Lewis. Um, who is looking to do a mixed-use development at the intersection of Cook Street and Irwin Street. Um, with that, uh, Planning Commission did recommend approval with some conditions that were discussed at the last or at the previous council meeting. Um, again, they did recommend approval, and there have been no additions or changes since the first reading. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Menino on this item? All right, thank you, Randy. And now I'll open up a public hearing in relation to SU 11-04. Anybody wishing to step forward and speak for or against may do so at this time. And seeing none, I'll close the public hearing for SU 11 excuse me, SU 11-04. And Chair will entertain any discussion, questions, mm -hmm. comments, or motions. Motion for approval. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. We have a uh, public hearing in regards to our capital improvements element. Once again, Mr. Menino. Uh, thank you again, Mayor and Council. Uh, annually, we have to do an update to our uh, development regulations um, requirements and it is actual the capital improvement element of our comprehensive plan. The city has adopted impact fees. We no longer, or we've amended the impact fee ordinance to knock that fee down to zero at this time. Um, even with that, we are required to file an annual report on the receipts and expenditures uh, and hold a public hearing and do a transmittal resolution. Once that takes place, it'll be reviewed by the Regional Commission and the Department of Community Affairs. When they review it, it'll come back to us. We'll finalize the document and bring it back to you for final adoption, probably in mid to late January. With that, this is an annual event. Um, we will continue to have to do as long as we have an impact fee ordinance in place. Uh, we recommend you approve this action, which includes, um, oh, have to open it up as a public hearing and uh, uh, there would also includes a transmittal resolution. Okay. 
Uh, any questions for Randy at this point? Thank you. And I will open up a public hearing uh, in relation to the capital improvements element that was just discussed. Anybody wishing to step forward and speak for or against may do so at this time. <laughs> And seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and ask council if they would like to have further discussion, any clarification, or if they would like to vote. Mayor, I do have a question. Brandy, I apologize. Mr. Menino, I presume, since we're no longer collecting impact fees, I presume that this number stays consistent year in, year out, with the exception of, as we discussed, the library. Are they in like an escrow kind of account, and are they... I'm, I'm sure I'll have to defer to the uh, finance director. They actually handled the funding. They did actually did the financial report for that document. So I don't know how the funds are kept uh, individually. They are kept in a separate fund. The, uh, the funds can be tracked as to how much each fund, each particular fund has. They are in a, in, in a, geri, in a generic checking account, but we can track them individually fund-wise. So if we looked at last year's numbers, it would be the same with the exception of interest. Yes. I can answer the second part of that. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or discussion? Thank you, Randy. And thank you, Tom. Motion to approve the transmittal resolution. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 And motion carries unanimously. We have uh, the first reading of an ordinance, uh, the amendment to our budget ordinance. I'm a mayor and council. After completion of the fiscal year in 2010-2011 closed, the general fund and special revenue funds need to be, uh, the, the budgets need to be amended. By amending these budgets, the city's, city's general and special revenue funds will, will not be in compliance with generally accepted accounting principles. These adjustments reflect the necessary changes needed to keep the budgets of these funds at a zero base level, which is uh, revenues equal expenses for the fiscal year 2011. The actual uh, general fund revenues total $53.6 million, while the expenses actually total $53.4 million. Okay. Any questions for Tom on this item? Thank you, sir. Thank you. This is a first reading and we'll Thank you. Thank you. And as Mr. Reinhardt so eloquently stated, there is no vote required at this one. We'll take this up for consideration at our uh, November 17th meeting. We, uh, next item, Sam, I believe you're going to handle that one for Yeah, us. right. This uh, is a, a license that comes from the uh, state uh, relative to the Country Club Drive, uh, US 41 intersection. Uh, later, it will be made in the form of an easement, but this uh, will allow the contractor to get on the property and to uh, improve the intersection and Country Club Drive. This is related to the item that we had with uh, Georgia Power improving that intersection. Uh, I recommend your approval. Okay. Any questions or comments? If not, I'll accept any motions. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Mr. Porter, you got the next couple items, please, sir. Yes, Mayor, it's a <coughs> renewal for our retiree insurance, those over 65 and, uh, and or disabled. It's a Medicare Advantage product that we uh, went to this past April. Uh, we did a nine-month contract at that time because we were trying to get back to our annual January through December insurance. It allows for the deductible to which is typically met on a calendar year basis, uh, and any, any other costs similar to that. Uh, recommended approval, renewal with United Healthcare, Medicare Advantage. Retirees uh, have been pleased with the product. There's a minor change with the product. We've expressed that. We sent a letter to the retirees and uh, you know, let them know the minor change is actually, if you're familiar with the Medicare product, it's a, there's a donut hole after $3,000 or $3,500, if you've used a lot of prescriptions, it's actually provide them a little bit of coverage during that donut hole period. But uh, it's a no cost and no change in premium to the retirees and I recommend approval. Okay. Questions for Mr. Port on this item? <clears throat> if not, Chair will entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. A motion and second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 The motion carries. Continue on. 
Yes, this next item is a construction material testing for public safety headquarters and fire service number four. Uh, submitted, sent out bids to several contractors to provide this service. Basically, they go behind the contractor and make sure the concrete material they're using is a medium <coughs> water intrusion testing and some other testing that do do soil testing to make sure the ground is compacted enough. Uh, the most complete bid was professional services industries at 30,000, not to, a price not to exceed $30,360. I recommend approval of this contract. Questions, comments, discussion? Um, are there any more of these kind of things? I thought, I guess I kind of assumed that between the, the design and between the turnkey on the construction, the most of that was taken care of. There most else? of it was taken care of. This is one item that you go outside and, and local um, vendors aren't available. Southland is doing some of the soil testing work, yeah. but some of the other testing got to be done. Uh, right. Anything else we anticipate bring to council on this like this? If there's any change orders, the only other major thing is we uh, was not included in con contracts with furniture and fixtures. Okay. Sure. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any motion to approve. Second. Any other further discussion? All in favor to by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Uh, the next item I will be recusing myself and uh, Mayor Pro Tem Tate will handle that. And when y'all are done, I may or may not be on the other side of that door. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Door number one. Next item is the 2012 calendar and annual report. Um, <coughs> this is something we actually do once a year. And Rebecca, would you like to talk to us about it? Thank you, Council. This is for the printing of the 2012 city calendar and annual report. We received um, bids from four printers, three local, and one from Marietta. And uh, we'd like to recommend stats printing, they came in for bonus bid of $6,995, and we have all the verified and saved documents we need. Thank you. Any questions, Rebecca? Mm -hmm. Any questions between council? No. Nope. I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Second. <clears throat> all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Mr. Love, are you going to get the mail? I think so. <coughs> <coughs> The uh, next item is the painting of uh, is David Myers. You can tell us what it is. There you go. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, this is a request to paint several steel structures on our yard, including a transformer hoist and a pole hoist. These items are about 10 years old and they're beginning to rust. We need to sand them, prime them, and paint them. We requested three bids from uh, local uh, contractors and two bids were received. James Carr sandblasting for $11,950, warranted for a year. Earl Hightower Construction, $18,900, warranted for two years. And Mr. Harold Rader uh, did, did not turn in a bid. Uh, and I recommend that we take the low bid of Mr. Carr for $11,950. Any questions for Mr. Myers? Mayor, I have a question. Go right ahead. David, help me with this, please. When it says we requested a bid, how is that different? Do we also post it in the media? Tell me how. Do we just identify the people in town that do this kind of specialized work? Is that right? That we, we, we identify the people in the town that do this type of work, and then we actually mail them a bid. Mm -hmm. And then what, what I do is I I also called those folks a few days later just to make sure they received it. In fact, I talked to Mr. Rader, and I believe that he said he had been sick recently uh, and said he did not know at that time whether or not he would turn one in. But, uh, but I do try my contact with all of theirs. So to help me and the general public, if it's a specialized thing that we know only a few people do, 
might not be posted in the newspaper or something. It might just miss call requesting a bid. Is that, is that? Well, we typically don't post in the newspaper. No, not fair that typically vendors that want to do business with the city will contact and say they want to be on your vendor list or when, when bids go right. out. If folks it's usually call us, I mean, we, we kind of keep a, uh, a running list of the, the kind of things, that, and we will certainly send them a bid when that type of work comes up. But uh, we haven't been posting it in the paper. Uh, state law says uh, construction projects of over $100,000, that's when you, that's typically what keys that. Yeah. Any other questions? If not, Chair will entertain a motion. Motion to approve the bid from all around roofing and gutters. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed like sign? That's his. Yeah, it's James Carr. All right, we're going to take sorry. that one. Yeah, take that would, one. You take that to, one would you care to pull your. Uh, <coughs> yes, I'll be glad to change that. Is that. Take a, a motion to undo Jake. the motion. Or? Motion to undo the motion. Yes, yes. I need a motion to undo your previous motion and vote. So moved. All right, I got a second. <coughs> we have a second to undo the previous motion. Second. second. All right, so we've got a motion and a second to previously undo that. I'm not going to ask Connie who's got what. Is everybody all in favor of undoing what was just done a moment ago? Please raise your hand and say aye. 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 And that is a unanimous. So now would we like to strike that and try that again? Do I get another chance? <laughs> At your own peril. <laughs> I'd like to recommend the acceptance of the bid from James Carr for $11,950. So, motion and a second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Good catch there, Lori. <laughs> I got too much time on my hands, I apologize. <laughs> the next item uh, is for roof replacement at the water lab. Mm -hmm. There, Council. <laughs> the uh, roof at the water department laboratory needs replacing. Bids were requested from two local okay. reputable companies that had experience with the replacement of flat roof, flat top membrane roofs. Bids re received were as follows. All around roofing and gutters incorporated submitted a bid of $10,701. Elite Roofing of Georgia submitted a bid of $14,220. We recommend an award of this contract to all around roofing and gutters incorporated in the amount of $10,701. All e verify and save documents are in place, and this will be paid for from the budget. Okay. You did? Yeah. Okay. Uh, any discussion? And if not, Chair Warren, send a motion. I'll try again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this time. <laughs> I'd like to offer the motion to approve the bid from all around roofing and gutters. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Next item, please. Okay, the next item is the South Irwin Street Water Main Replacement Project. The Water Department has designed and received bids on a project to replace the water mains on South Irwin Street between Main Street and Georgia Boulevard. This project will involve the replacement of approximately 4,200 feet of existing 8 inch and 12 inch diameter cast iron water mains, some of which are in excess of 100 years old. Replacement of these new mains with a 12 inch diameter ductile iron line will allow for increased flows and improved water quality. These uh, improvements are critical, critical for commercial and residential growth and will enhance firefighting capabilities. The Water Department received bids from five contractors for the project, ranging in price from $514,840.85 to $849,488. We recommend award of this project to the low bidder, T.J. Lyle & Company of Taylorsville, Georgia, which submitted a bid in the amount of $514,840.85. This work will be paid for with capacity fees, e-verify, and save document. Documentation has been submitted. Okay. Any discussion on this item? All right. If not, the chair will entertain a motion. Motion for approval to T.J. Lyon and Company, who's the low bidder of five separate bids. 
second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 The motion carries. Thank you, Ed. Next up, we've got our uh, monthly financial report, Mr. Reinhardt. <laughs> Well, fortunately, Tom has provided us with a very succinct uh, sheet of paper that kind of goes over what he's got. And so we know what we've got. And hopefully, the graphics will catch up with you in your report. Well, okay. <coughs> Honorable Mayor and Council, we'll be looking at the August 2011 and comparing to out August 2010. In the general fund, revenues have decreased over August 2010 by $122,000. Expenses have decreased also by not also, but they have also decreased by $680,000. This is due mainly to the decreased personnel expenses. Remember, we had three, three pay periods in the month of July. Also, also decreased in the uh, general fund for the operating fees. Uh, the three areas of uh, expenses or the revenues that I look at on a monthly basis are the local walk and sales tax. We've got a decrease overall uh, from the 2011 level, level of $123,000. Police fines and forfeitures also decreased by $17,000, and building permits and inspection fees uh, also decreased by $4,000. In the water and sewer fund, revenues decreased over August 2010 by $65,000. Expenses also decreased by $236,000. These expenses also were the result of the personal expense, personal expenses and decrease in the debt service payments. In the gas fund, revenues have increased from August 2010 by $47,000. Expenses have decreased by $259,000, mainly due to decreases in the personal cost and operating costs and the cost of purchase of gas. In the electric fund, revenues have increased from last year by $917,000, while expenses have also increased by $620,000. This increase in expenses is due mainly to the cost of purchasing electricity. In the stormwater fund, <coughs> excuse me, revenues have increased from last year by $6,000. Expenses have decreased by $18,000, and this is due to the personal uh, expenses and capital expenses. Solid waste fund, revenues decreased from last year by $2,000, uh, $2, and expenses decreased by $24,000, and also decreased by the, the cost of personal expenses. And finally, the fiber, fiber optics fund, revenues have increased from 2010 by, 30, by, by about $3,000. Expenses have decreased by $48,000. This is due to lower personal expenses and lower operating expenses. That is my report. I've got a question about the, uh, the lost money that's uh, coming in the local option sales tax. Uh, it's a pretty significant decrease, not that I've hold you responsible yes. for that, but is is this uh, any indication what this, what I have looked at the month of September, the month of September is up slightly, but in the month of October it goes back down some. <clears throat> so I don't know if there's a, I'm hoping that the Christmas season or holiday season will kind of boost up a little bit and get back in line with the budget. Is it, is that, is it tracking how far off our budgeted projections is it tracking? It's tracking about $17,000 roughly a month. Less? Yes. Than we budget? Okay. Yes. Yeah, relative to the explanation, the only one I've heard is the county thinks that uh, Georgia Power is burning less coal and that's affecting the number. So. Okay. Any other questions for Tom on the financial report? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. You guys are going to have to get Richard to replace you. You know. Every time he leaves. <laughs> what Richard's equal to? Every time Randy he leaves. And Tom. Tom was left in charge. <laughs> uh, we are going to add an item to the uh, agenda, and we're going to move it. I'm going to ask council to add a, uh, the item that we had regarding sidewalks uh, to the agenda, and I'd like to handle that next. So I'll entertain a motion to add that item to the agenda. Motion to add to the agenda. Second. We've got a motion and a second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 The motion uh, carries. Uh, Mr. Elliott, if, if you wouldn't mind coming up and uh, kind of restating what we discussed in the work session. I know that some people, you're so good you don't need pictures. Uh, and there are some people here that uh, that are here with expressing a concern over the sidewalks. I'd like for, for the record for you to have 
why we're doing what we're doing and inform the public and then give them an opportunity to speak, please. Mayor, uh, good evening, Mayor, members of council. We, we're, we've we been replacing some sidewalk or renewing some sidewalk along the West Avenue, the older section of town. Uh, primarily, we've been over there because we've had a couple of pedestrians trip and fall and, you know, tree roots over the years push sidewalk sections up and it, you know, people get tripped, they trip up on the, on the, on the uh, pushed up sections of sidewalk. We've got lots of areas in the older sections of town where roadways have been resurfaced numerous times over the last 40, 50 years and, you know, milling of streets really didn't come into prominence past 10 years ago. So nobody milled the streets like we do now. We mill and put back. But uh, these streets have no curb left because asphalt's filled up, up the street. And if we've got sections of, of sidewalks anywhere in town that have that case, we normally go in and we'll re-pour the sidewalk a lot of times right on top of the old one and let the sidewalk come out six inches to the front surface of the curb that was there to recoup the curb back because in lots of areas we've got stormwater running off streets through yards and not making it to catch basins. Um, so we try to uh, fix the whole gambit while we're there. You know, run off in the streets, ADA compliance, getting the extra width of sidewalk. Uh, we fix the trip hazards. Uh, we do take out the beauty strip, the little narrow strip of grass that's pretty much prominent <coughs> in lots of areas in town, especially the old areas of town. Um, it's a quick fix the way we do it. It looks, I think, it looks professional. Uh, it takes the beauty strip out, uh, but we do it cheaply. <coughs> we do it with inmate labor. Uh, they go in and they take out sec you know, uh, concrete sections and they break them up and we reuse that on drainage projects all over town. But, and we, we do the pouring primarily with our batch truck that we have, you know, in-house. Um, we were replacing sidewalks basically for material costs, that's it. Um, but we try to fix everything that needs to be fixed uh, to protect public safety, health and welfare of the uh, pedestrian public. Um, we've had questions raised in, in a couple of historic areas that don't like the beauty strip being taken out. Um, we've got probably 75% of the areas where the homeowners that their yards are adjacent to the beauty strip, they mow it. 25% of the people don't. So, you know, but that's the way we've been doing it. That's the way it was done before me. That's the way we're doing it. So I guess basically we just need some direction from Mayor Council on which way we go from here. Okay. And just to be clear, the, what you're putting in is now ADA compliant, Correct. handling storm water, yes. uh, so that there's not water running over the tops of the sidewalks and we're leveling off areas that have not been yes. leveled for a number of years. You know, and, and, and as I stated in the work session, we, we, we could go back and do it and put it back, renew it with the beauty strip. The only issue with that is we, the, the cost of cutting streets, taking up old curb, raising it up, pouring new curb, uh, we still end up with the same sidewalk width. We'd have to attain an extra foot, foot and a half of right of way from adjoining property owners to get that ADA compliant width. And we just don't have the funds to do that. Okay. When you, and you said in the work session, five to six times the amount of money, what amount are we talking about? I, I'm not going to stand here and give you a number because I don't. I haven't run the numbers, but it's contract work. We can't do it in house. Um, so we don't know how much it's costing us to do what we're doing right now. In probably 10 minutes at my office, I can tell you what it's costing. We, you know, we our batch truck. We buy sand, gravel, and bulk Portland cement. Our truck mixes it on site. Mm -hmm. We have. Uh, Inmate labor is cost us zero. We pay the guard salary. We pay probably two of our employees' salary to finish the concrete. So it's costing us probably a third as much as it would cost even to buy a load of ready mix concrete by the yard. So if you add con you know contract labor to cut streets, tear out, put back, um, 
I wouldn't even estimate a no, dollar per foot that it would cost us to do that. If we got any we, kind of no, notification procedure to, or, even if that's just knocking on the door and telling folks what we're going to do. Sam, we have not been doing that. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying it's required. I wonder if it might not be a good idea. We, we, we've not been doing that, and, 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 and I agree. We should, okay. we should be doing that. Okay. How do you decide which sidewalks are improved? Is there a list or a ranking of the ones that are causing the most problems? Or We don't have a generalized list. We, um, uh, my supervisor has been here 15 years, and he pretty well knows where the uh, particular curbs are non-existent. Mm -hmm. and if we have an accident, if we have somebody to trip and fall, then obviously we jump right there and start. That's what we do. Um, the liability issue, Keith can, can uh, some, to add some comments on that. We've had a couple in the last three months that have done that. And you know, once we know about it, we don't hesitate very long to go jump on it. And then, and then it's, if you've got a whole street you're looking at, where do you stop? You know, we just keep going. Mm -hmm. If it's the same all the way, we just keep going until we get to a stopping point. And have we had issues in the historic area with tripping and falling? Yes, yes, we have. Actually, the two we've had, the last two we've had, have both been one on West Cherokee and one on West Avenue. Matt mentioned telephone poles. Just because I'm somewhat, I mean, uh, yeah. sorry, he mentioned mailboxes. Just mm -hmm. because I've been in the area. We have power lines, cell phone poles, whatever it may be, that are in the sidewalk. Are we just pouring around those? We do if, uh, and, and David and I, David Myers and I had a discussion a few minutes ago, if he's got poles that are in the sidewalk that have to be replaced, he relocates them to, to behind the sidewalk on a, on a case by case as they change out poles. Okay. A lot of times, mailboxes, we have to, we have to talk to the post office they get with the carrier, and if, it's, if the conditions are right, if they can get up on the sidewalk, they'll let us move them. Sometimes they won't. I know Glen Cove Drive has got, it, it's one of the worst cases of, of a narrow sidewalk that's poured all the way out. Side, the mailboxes are right down the line in the sidewalk. So. I didn't think about that, but in my neighborhood, it's the same way. We got metal mailboxes in the middle of the sidewalks. Yeah. And that is controlled by the post office, yeah. not us. In fact, we've had over on, in front of the Fight Living Center on Fight Street, we've had, uh, we had a situation where we had some, some electric poles in the sidewalk and we went in with property owner's permission and report areas around that pole mm -hmm. so, so a uh, wheelchair can get around because they've got lots of folks over there that, that do travel wheelchairs. So. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Elliott on this item right now? Thank you. Thank you. And uh, anybody wishing to step forward and comment may do so at this time. If, when you do, if you please would state your name and your address for our clerk. Mayor, Council, Allison Dillon, 307 West Avenue. I brought pictures. <laughs> I wasn't really planning to speak, but just to say that I fielded quite a few calls from neighbors that were pretty upset about just the aesthetics changing. We understand replacing the sidewalk if it needed to be, but it just changed up the aesthetics of our historic neighborhood so that it really changes the look. You know, we just felt like there was something that might be done to some effect where we say that like a few years ago they did go back and replace certain segments of the sidewalk and they only did the sidewalk and left the beauty strip, which gives character to Old Town. Um, and I think that's about it. I'd just like to say that, you know, we'd like to see it remain the same. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else? This is the council, I'm Mr. Mayor. Uh, my name is Lynn Pritchett, and I live at 217 South Water Street. And and here I am about all the neighborhood. Um, it's a historic district. 
if I decided that I wanted to brick my sidewalk or change the front of my house or anything in my front yard, I have to go before the Historic Preservation Committee to get it approved. Um, I guess I'm asking, the last few times that we've been here, the Old Town neighborhood or members from Old Town neighborhood, is seems like there's being things done in the historic district that is there not some way the Historic Preservation Committee can be consulted before projects started? I know they're not a lawmaking committee, but shouldn't it be considered before something does? My question to Mr. Elliott is, I know you're pouring the form for the sidewalk and you're adding new curve, you're raising it up, and not having to cut out the road to do this. Can they not put two more pieces of form down through there to put the beauty strip back in, have the curve form for the grass? I, I think the, the issue I think the issue that he brought up is with ADA compliance, there's a, there's when you make those improvements we're required to be ADA compliant, which which requires okay. a five foot is, width. That is for improvement and not for replacement. That's my understanding. Is that Mary, I know exactly what she's asking. The the issue is when you when you use the sidewalk front edge as the new curve, if you come back six inches and and make two cuts to put the beauty strip back, well you've only got six inches of cold jointed concrete to act as a curve. And the first time a car bumps it, that will be that will break off. There's no way to anchor it in. That's why the whole sidewalk slab itself acts to support that process of that curve. Yeah, we've thought about that. We thought about that early. And there's just no way to just no way to anchor it in. But to answer her question, if you're replacing a sidewalk or just, you know repairing. almost repairing or maintaining a sidewalk, do you have to be compliant? If there's no curb left and we just have a broken sidewalk section or trip hazards in the sidewalk, we will re-pour that sidewalk slab right back in its place. It's the fact that we don't have curb is when we, you know, we, we've got to try to fix that some way. Because without curb, if you re-pour the sidewalk back in the <laughs> same plane it's in, you're not doing anything else. It's just going to run right over. Yeah. So. Okay, thank you. And I also understand that there is some splash money for repair and uh, replacement of sidewalks, but you're going to use that for new? That's... That we could use this to, to do what needs to be done in the historic district. If we're going to have a historic district or districts in the city of Carswell, can we not make them historic districts and keep it that way? That's my question. Um, that, yeah. that sounds rhetorical to me, so I'll okay. continue on. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's just like, okay, we've got historic districts, but on this part, even though anybody in the neighborhood or historic district has to go before the preservation to change anything, we have to do that. But it's just like, okay, well, we're going to do the cheap way here by replacing the sidewalk this way instead of making it with like materials, like the ordinance, the city ordinance says, it has to be replaced with like materials. Mr. Lovell, I, I know you and I have had a conversation about this, but please clarify for me. Do, do sidewalks fall under the purview of historic preservation? Generally, no. Um, one of the except, generally, the city itself does not fall under the historic preservation ordinance. Um, there are times when the city is required uh, by law to submit certain projects um, to the Historic Preservation Commission for them to comment on for a 45-day period. Um, however, at the end of that period, the city does not have to do anything that they, the board says or does not say, and they can either take their comments or go ahead and do whatever they want to with respect to that particular project. The definitions under state law um, talk about um, building structures, architectural standards, walkways, which are not sidewalks under state law, um, and pavements, which, again, pavements are not sidewalks. 
So sidewalks in general are not um, specifically spelled out you know, under the state law for historic preservation. Okay, so one question. Well, let me, let me swap chairs with you for a okay. second. Let me ask you a question. If that's, is that okay, Ms. Pritchett? What, given the choice between having the existing sidewalks that are sitting there in the condition that they're in and having a new sidewalk, which, which would you prefer? I would prefer the sidewalk to be repaired. That's, I gave you two options. <laughs> They've been the way it is then. Okay. 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 Um, you know, my next question was, since Mr. Lovell came up with that, if I decided to my the walkway from the sidewalk to my front porch is now just like the sidewalk in front of my house. What if I decided to brick it? Am I going to have to go before the historic preservation? Um, mm -hmm. Depending upon the design guidelines for your specific district, you may have to. Um, some districts include walkways and some do not. And I don't remember whether Old Town is one that does versus West, Ave West Avenue mm -hmm. one or the West End one or the DBD one. Um, you know, they all have different elements that you look at that are required to go before the Historic Preservation Board to rule. I know in some that walkways are required. To go before them. Right. On the sidewalk on Old um, Irwin Street from, let's say, Georgia Boulevard to Old Mill Road, I think that's been put in within the last couple of years. Is that right? Anyway, no, I don't know. Anyway, it has the beauty strip down through there, so I don't, I don't know what the difference is. I'm just bringing these points up. Irwin to Georgia Boulevard by. Done in 2002. <coughs> When they, when they redid the old mill road, yeah. Southbridge, all that. And, then and, that, and how wide is that side? Not that I. It's, real it's an unfair question to ask okay. you that, but right. any idea? Okay. And it may have been before that ADA compliant rule came into effect. There's, I mean, okay. there's no. I'm not but, saying it is or it isn't. Okay. I'm just. But the ADA compliant rule is for new and not replacement, right? Correct. It is actually for repair and replacement. Okay. Um, yeah. It gets into a little gray area for repair. I mean, you know, if you've got a crack that you're just filling in, know that crack itself probably doesn't require you to rip up the whole sidewalk and make it ADA compliant. If it's more major structurally repair, you know, like you're doing several feet or a long distance, then you probably do have to comply with the ADA. It's not really a, a blanket thing when you're talking about repair and maintenance, but it's a major repair project, yes, you do. And unfortunately, the ADA does trump um, Historic Preservation Act and numerous other local laws. So low cost outweighs aesthetics. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Right now, as it is, there's, is there a timeline for the rest of the neighborhood for the sidewalks? Because we have half a block mm -hmm. that is totally different from the rest of the neighborhood. It's because we were responsive to the needs of the community and yes, we stopped. Yes, you were very responsive and we appreciate that. Um, quite honestly, we've, we've added this to the agenda to hear your comments and the comments of those that came with you. and. Um, because I'm just like, if it is going forward, which we, we would prefer it to stay as it is in the, as the old sidewalks to keep our character of our neighborhood. Because what happened, I think, was the biggest shock was that it wasn't just one or two places. It was almost the entire block. So it was kind of shocking to see when you drove up. It wasn't like the rest of the neighborhood and across the streets not the same. So, you know, I guess deciding on which way it goes if it goes forward and you say that sidewalks are going to change from here on, you know, it'd be nice to know that the rest of them are going to change instead of just having this one. So do you want the other half block fixed or not? No, not really. Well, I mean, do you think the neighborhood shares that opinion? Yes. So just to make it clear, generally, you want, you want it to stay just as it is? No repairs? Are we okay leaving it the way it is, where it's cut off? We can do that, Sam, but, but we have 
hazard. It's a safety hazard. I mean, no one of the pictures that you provided with us shows a pretty drastic drop off with orange cones right there. I mean, is there any kind of stopping point that? Yeah, we, we can go back and transition it back. Yeah. Okay. Transition it back to what? Well, you'd have to go forward. You'd have to do more of it in the style that we're doing and just transition, transition maybe spread, it stop it at a driveway or something. Walk. Oh, okay. Down to South End. Okay. Um, but you are going to go over to Leak Street next and go all the way down Leak Street? Well, we've got, we got sections of Leak Street that sidewalk basically doesn't even exist in a couple areas. Yeah. I think we, we probably need to rethink what we're doing the sidewalks in there. All right. Well, thank you for your comments. And Bobby, has any of the, and Allison, I apologize, I don't know where you live. I know you're on West Ham. Right on the same, well, the next block. Okay. Is anybody that these are in front of, if they complained, come to, they just come to you guys? In, in, in fact, the, the lady that lives at the residence where we stopped was rather upset because we didn't finish it up. Finish up in front of her house. So, you know. but I mean, I understand what what the the neighborhood is saying is you know it is a historic district, um, and it just riding through there. There's different si there's going to be different sidewalks all through the the area. Um, would it not look better to go ahead and finish this? I mean, where were you going with this? All the way down West Avenue to Bartow? Wherever, wherever the curb is non existent. Okay, so if you got further up the street, the curb, we would transition it back. So, Bobby, at some point, we're going to have to do something with sidewalks, period. We can't just mm -hmm. let them disintegrate into nothing and not have any curb, period, correct? We cannot ignore pedestrians that that have accidents because we need to make repairs. Now we can go in and, and we can repair those sidewalk sections and leave them like they are. We still got stormwater running across the. And Keith, currently in our, in, the, in what happens from this point forward, we have to be ADA compliant. Oh yes. So even though the neighborhood itself may want it to stay the same, if there's no curbs and there's a liability there, we're going to have to fix it one way or the other. And when we fix it, it will have to be ADA compliant. Okay. And I would like, when that happens, I think that asking the neighborhood, um, and if the neighborhood or the people that are adjoining where we're having to fix that, if the neighborhood is as passionate as they say they are, getting that one foot might not be a problem. And one foot into the yard. Getting, getting, you know, you still got a problem with the curb you got to fix, even if you do it that way. And the other thing is, when you look at some of these, one of, Bobby, one of the pictures you showed us in work session, if you'd have tried to get another foot towards the house, there's a big tree sitting right, right there. And pretty soon we're going to start cutting roots. And the right. next thing you know, we're going to have to start replacing the trees. Well, you have all, you have, you have all kinds of conditions. You've got, you've got right there, you've, so got, you've, you've got, got brick wall, you've you got, got brick walls to contend some, with. Some of those knee walls have been there as long as the sidewalk has been there. So you get into the question of historic walls. I mean, you can't. But Bobby, if they have a knee wall, you don't have a stormwater problem into the yard. But that's you still have it onto the sidewalk. That's great, but you can't get ADA compliance if your if your curb's gone. I got you. I got you. That that was the picture I was thinking about. Plus, the other issue is if you try to get that other foot, we run into the issue with the postal service that uh, that was brought up earlier. Um, I, I think perhaps um, we need to go out there and. I think you got the direction we'll kind of slow things down in this particular area and uh, I, I would guess that you probably want to talk to the person who's got their yard halfway done and if they want us to finish that yard we do that and I'd give us you go to the next house and ask them if they want theirs done or not well I'll tell you what we'll do from here on out what we'll do is we'll we'll take the the old town neighborhood and we will we'll survey all of it to see how bad you know how much we have and then we'll Take it one step at a time. Okay. Make sure there's a notification piece. Make sure we're talking. To Absolutely. You. Okay. Thank you, Bob. My name's Clay Mooney. I live on South Avenue. 
Um, I want to make it clear, first of all, I'm, I'm, I didn't come for this issue one side or the other, um, but I just happened to be here so I wanted to make a comment. Um, I, I don't know how I feel about the beauty strip one way or another. That's certainly not my issue. Um, and if it has to be, if it's an issue of the width of the sidewalk being ADA compliant, I understand that. But if it's a curb issue, as you said, um, I work in the pavement industry now, just happen to be. Um, and I understand that you said uh, that milling was not common practice 10 years ago. Now it is. Um, these roads will have to be repaved in a number of years. Uh, and at that point, you would generally mill an inch, two inches off the, the surface of the road. There wouldn't be any difference in, in milling, or there would be minimal difference in milling two inches at that point than milling three or four or five inches to, restart, uh, to restore the, the actual curb line. So that may be an option for the, uh, the alternate option. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right, any other discussion? Anybody wish to step forward and speak on this issue? properties have been handed down through my family uh, since actually late 1930s. So we're fourth generation on, uh, down from South Avenue. Uh, and it would bother me extensively if the curbing down South Avenue had to take away that beauty strip, basically because there are dogwoods down through there placed. And I know we've lost many, many beautiful, huge, huge oak trees all over the city um, due to uh, different situations, maybe uh, storms or just too close to the road, whatever the uh, issue might have been for the trees, but the uh, dogwoods in Old Town area or any of these historic districts make a big difference in the aesthetic um, vision of uh, people coming into our community. So hopefully, if it comes down South, South Avenue, we definitely can have some uh, blocks of the concrete that need to be replaced. But I would certainly hope um, that they could be individually taken up and just re repaired at that point. Okay. Thank you. All right. We're going to move off that item if everybody has had an opportunity to speak. Uh, and we're going to move on to the next item, uh, which involves the uh, Alcohol Control Board Appeals at our last meeting. We had public hearings. This is uh, strictly a conversation for council uh, to take up the issue. Once again, we've got 30 days to make a decision. However, we have the option of making a decision tonight. Uh, it, personally, it's my hope that we can uh, find some resolution and move forward on this evening. But once again, uh, that is at the hands of council. So uh, we have three different uh, public hearings that we heard in our last uh, meeting. They were, refresh my memory, Tarasco's, uh, Knights, and the Hilton Garden Inn. <clears throat> and um, and I, what I'd like to do is separate each of these individually. We'll handle each one individually and then move on. And if there's a motion to be made, then so be it. And uh, we'll, we'll go on from there. Why don't we start with, uh, with Knights? Um, Questions or comments or discussion on that uh, on that particular specific incident. Mayor, I feel. Mayor, I feel differently about <clears throat> nights than maybe some of the others, simply because it was a state sting. The city was not involved, and I'm repeating myself from the earlier session. But I presume that's what you want us to do: have a full discussion. Uh, we could either have a, a discussion and go over things, or, and like I said, this is, it is meant to be as structured or as unstructured as council desires. Uh, if you want to lay out uh, your feelings and then make a motion, that's fine. If somebody just wants to make a motion, that's fine with me, too. Let me lay out my feelings, make a motion, and see if I can get a second. How about that? Fair enough. Um, there were several things that were completely different. One is, it was a very much a split vote on our alcohol control board and it took three votes to even get there. Um, and it was a 2-2 two -two and a, a, finally a 3-2. So I think they were being conflicted in, in but it was a 2-2, two 2-2, -two, two -two, and then a 3-2. I think they had a lot of conflict in looking at it. 
the person actually serving alcohol was never, uh, no action was taken against that person. Um, I didn't appreciate, I don't know how our chief feels, we did talk with him some, I didn't appreciate the state not letting the city of Cartersville know they typically do, and they did in this case. So I think there's a number of things that are different. Um, so based on that, I would like to offer Uh, a fine of $500 with one year probation for nights based on the rationale I've just heard. Second. All right, there's a motion and a second. I want anyone, to, uh, anyone in favor to raise your hand and say aye. 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 Is that unanimous? Sorry, nobody kept their hands up high enough. Anybody opposed? All right, so that uh, one year probation, $500 is. Uh, is approved. The uh, the next uh, the next item would be the Hilton Garden Inn, and we're open for discussion on that item. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion. Um, I'd make a motion that we keep the fine at twenty five hundred dollars, and we uh, reduce the uh, probationary period to just one year. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Well, I can second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for one year probation, $2,500 fine. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed like sign? And motion carries four to two, is that correct? Okay. And the third item is uh, for Tarascos. Discussion on that item. I'll make a motion. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to uh, deny the appeal and leave the fine at $2,500 and three years probation. Second. I have a motion and a second uh, for $2,500 fine, three year probation denying the appeal. I've got a motion and a second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed like sign? And the motion carries by five to one. Um, that uh, handles all three of those. And um, what is the process that goes uh, from there, Mr. Lovell? The process is uh, we will send out a letter to um, each of the um, appellants informing them of the decision of the mayor and council and notifying them of the uh, modification or lack of modification with respect to their appeal. And we will include a refund to um, Knight's um, 1899 of their um, portion of the fine that's been reduced. Okay. Uh, any other questions, comments? Is there any other business that needs to come before council this evening? Uh, seeing none, uh, anybody got anything to add? Do you want people to go vote next Tuesday? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. Good plan, Jason. Why don't you tell everybody about it? He already voted. I did already vote. <laughs> yeah, you can't are, early vote this week, but uh, Tuesday is our, our election. We're not telling you how to vote. We're just telling you to vote. Got a couple <laughs> of school board races. I uh, have uh, alcohol package sales on Sundays on there, as well as the wow. Splost Initiative. <coughs> and uh, we do encourage everybody to, to get out and exercise your right to vote. That being said, motion to adjourn. So moved. Adjourn. Wow.